Everything you've been taught about mass is just wrong. And I'll show you why. See, the equation E equals mc squared was actually written initially by Einstein as m equals E over c squared. What this equation suggests is that mass is actually just the total energy something has divided by the speed of light squared. So if mass was simply just the amount of stuff something had, then its building blocks should add up to the mass of it as well. For example, the weight of this gold block should be the equivalent of the weight of 9 gold ingots. Interestingly, that's not the case. Let's take the sheep that weighs 10,000 kilograms. Fatty. The sheep's body is fundamentally made of atoms, and then these atoms are made of protons, electrons, and neutrons. And even further, protons and neutrons are made of quarks. So if mass was just the amount of stuff something had, the weight of the quarks and electrons combined together should amount to 10,000 kilograms. But it doesn't. The weight of all the quarks and electrons only amount to about 1% of the sheep's total weight. And this fact stumped scientists, making them wonder where all the weight comes from. But then, Einstein figured out that the rest of the mass is just energy. Let's zoom in on the quarks here. Each proton and neutron are made up of three quarks, and these quarks undergo something called the strong nuclear force. And what causes the strong nuclear force is an attribute called color within quarks. So this topic could be its whole video on its own, but in a short summary, the quarks shoot gluons at each other, which glue the quarks together. The interactions with quarks and gluons are due to their color being red, blue, green, anti-blue, anti-red, and anti-green, which creates an attractive force similar to how positive and negative ions are attracted to each other. However, the amount of energy in the strong nuclear force is ridiculous, as even when it's divided by c squared, it provides about 99% of the weight in a body. But then you might be wondering about that extra 1% of the weight coming from quarks and electrons. I just told you that mass is just energy, so then what is the weight coming from? And this question also stumped scientists for about 50 years. So they ended up theorizing about an energy field, otherwise known as a Higgs field, that gives mass to quarks and electrons. But then, in 2012, two scientists, Peter Higgs and Francois Englert, proved the existence of the Higgs field with some experiments. And then they got the Physics Nobel Prize for that in 2013. So that's cool. So, the energy of the Higgs field and the strong nuclear force bends space-time, or in other words, creates gravity. So this is what makes something feel heavy, or that's how you see something having mass. Essentially, we made up the definition of mass. Mass is really just a manifestation of energy. When you step on a scale and see how much you weigh, you're actually just measuring the amount of energy in your body divided by c squared. Okay, so that's cool and all, but you may be wondering, what does this mean? Like, sick, we're made of energy, but what does this tell us? Well, let's see here. We have two powered rails, and they are identical to each other. You know, same quarks, electrons, and energy. So, right now, they should be the same weight. But when I flick this lever and add energy to this rail, it actually gains weight. This rail is heavier than the other one. The energy from the lever is stored as potential energy inside the powered rail, and Einstein's equation means that this rail is now heavier. However, this is almost an unmeasurable amount. Remember, mass is energy divided by the speed of light squared, so this rail is only like a trillionth of a percent heavier. This idea also applies to bows. If we ignore the weight of the arrow, a drawn bow weighs more than a still bow. By pulling the string back, we increase the potential energy inside the wood and the string. Then, this extra energy turns into a teeny bit more weight inside of the bow. And that's crazy to think, because I didn't add any additional matter to the bow, but it's still heavier. In this case, the sheep has additional thermal energy, which is stored in the sheep's atoms. It being hotter causes it to be heavier than a non-burning sheep due to the additional energy. However, what's weird is that kinetic energy, or movement energy, does not affect one's weight. Based off the powered rail in the bow and the sheep, this moving minecart feels like it should have a heavier weight than a stationary minecart. But it doesn't. These two minecarts are the exact same weight, and the reasoning behind this is a bit complex. What's different about kinetic energy is that it's not actually inside of the minecart. The additional kinetic energy isn't really stored inside of the atoms because of this. And on top of this, the kinetic energy of the minecart could be subjective to the observer. Let's take this example. When I'm standing still, the speed of this minecart is 8 meters a second. Now, let's get into minecart going the opposite direction. From my perspective, the minecart is going 16 meters a second. But even worse, if someone was in outer space standing still, then the speed of the minecart would be added on to the speed of the Earth, meaning that the minecart would be going 30,000 meters per second. According to these three different perspectives, the kinetic energy of the minecart is different. That means, to the observer from outer space, the minecart would be heavier compared to the other two, and this is paradoxical. So, because of this, E equals mc squared takes into account rest energy. 
Or, in other words, the mass of an object is determined by the energy it has when there is zero kinetic energy, otherwise known as an inertial frame. This is the same as if you were just going the same speed as the object that you're observing. So E equals mc squared tells us that we can change the weight of an object by adding additional energy, either by thermal or potential energy. Nice. But I saved the cool stuff for last. But first, if you've been enjoying the video, please like and subscribe as it's the best way to help me out here. And if you have any suggestions, please comment down below. Anyways, back to the video. This equation, written the form that most of us are familiar with, has destructive implications. So, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. And since the speed of light squared is just a massive number, just small amounts of mass can generate tons of energy. Stars abuse this law, and that's how they produce heat, otherwise known as nuclear fusion. Simply, what they do is take two hydrogen atoms and slam them together, creating helium. However, the weight of the helium is actually less than the combined weight of the two hydrogen atoms. Lost mass is turned into energy, which is why stars are so hot. And a better explanation for why this happens is explained really well in the But Why video. And you should check that out. So, this lost energy is then radiated from the sun, and that's what we feel down here on Earth. Scientists saw the power the sun generated with just hydrogen, and they realized they could potentially replicate it down here on Earth. The process is really simple, all they had to do was just slam hydrogen atoms against each other. And they did that. They successfully accomplished nuclear fusion. But there was a problem. It took too much energy. See, the problem is that protons are like cats and creepers, where they repel each other. Protons are both positively charged, so they push each other with a tremendous amount of force. For something as small as a helium atom, when the two protons are touching, they're pushing away each other with 20 pounds of force. If you go back to earlier about the strong nuclear force with quarks, this is what keeps helium together. It counteracts the 20 pounds of force with something 137 times stronger, pulling the two protons together. However, this attraction is only at short ranges, so in order for those two protons to combine together to make helium, they have to be going incredibly fast and smash into each other to override this repulsion. To increase their speed, you need heat and pressure. The sun has both already, which is why fusion is so easy for it. But down here on Earth, the heat we need for fusion is crazy. For fusion to occur, we need the reactor to be 100 million degrees Fahrenheit. So because of this, having fusion take place spends more energy than it makes. We can't replicate the stars yet because they have a heat and mass advantage, which cheats out the barrier that we hit. So unfortunately, we are now stuck at this roadblock. Nuclear fusion would be the cleanest source of energy that we could harness. Fossil fuels are limited and cause global warming. Solar power is unreliable and not cost efficient. Nuclear fission creates radioactive waste and is not a renewable source of energy. So if we were able to find a way to harness the energy from nuclear fusion, we could create the first source of clean energy. On top of this, it produces helium, which is projected to run out in about 300 years. To summarize all this, we do not convert from mass to energy. Mass is energy. What makes up this energy is a strong nuclear force from quarks and their color, as well as the Higgs field. Adding energy to an object increases its mass, but adding kinetic energy to an object does not. This equation not only explains what mass is, but also how stars work. E equals mc squared is how we, in our planet, live. If we learn how to use the equation to generate unlimited energy, we can be like Dream and cheat our way into a completely changed future.